Welcome back to the A to B podcast. I am your host, Albert Ramos. This is part two. We're talking to two active duty drone instructors that are currently aboard MCRD San Diego. Two top performing drone instructors. Like always, I am here with my co-host, Barry Bull. Uh, drone instructor back in back in the day in 2004 right Barry 2004 to 2007 yeah 2007 to me it wasn't that long ago what do you guys think it wasn't that That's long ago. Uh, whatever it was a shit oh, ton hey, of time wow. ago Abe's on it today guys <laughs> we <laughs> hate <laughs> Abe everybody was, unfollow I was 7 years old <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Damn, he was 7 Woo! years old and then the the the, the what we're going to be talking uh, go ahead and go see part 2 right here oh I'm sorry part 1 right here um, because we were talking about their their experiences mm. uh, whenever it came to them becoming marines and them going through the recruit process now we're going to be talking about what w we left off with jasmine when she was about to put in her drill instructor package now we're going to go ahead and ask abe because abe he was telling us guys in the previous part if you guys <laughs> yeah. haven't seen it he was like screaming to himself in the in the mirror okay in his car yeah. counting himself sure. down yeah. Um, so so hey so when uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is um, when would you when did you put in your drone instructor package like as soon as I could? Yeah, so I uh, some I was a sergeant in three years a little bit over three years, mm. and um, I submitted it with my reenlistment. I was like, how can I go be a drone instructor in the West Coast? So I was like, I want to go back to Third Battalion, want to be whatever. They're like, submit with your reenlistment. So I reenlisted at WTI. Uh, best place in the world, Yuma, Arizona. Yep. Right. Slop yeah. City. Um, Shout out to Slop City over there. The desert. I reenlisted over there, and then uh, my incentive for reenlisting was being a West Coast drone instructor. But a lot of Marines don't look at, you know, you're the like the perfect child for the Marine Corps. A lot of Marines don't look at uh, a B bill as an incentive. Well, that was my goal. So I, I didn't care about, you know, my M was didn't have a bonus or anything like that. You know, I didn't have my my preferred duty station was. To be a drone instructor. Well, your bonus is that you get to be a Marine. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, I was like, I don't want to go nowhere else. Like, I was like, I've been to Japan. I've been in California. I don't want to go to the You've East Coast. You've been to Egypt. I've been to Egypt, <laughs> lived there. Cross uh, country. I've traveled to like 20 plus countries at that point. I was like, I just, I want to be a drone instructor. I was like, so I put it in my package. Um, okay. I had to wait a little bit longer because I, I, I got in some trouble. What? Um. Hey, what trouble did you get in? Damn it. Um, I had three 6105s in like six months Yeah, before I left Japan. Wow. And For those of you that don't know, 6105 is a negative written counseling. It, stay, it goes in your official military personnel file, and yeah. it stays there. Okay. Yeah, and um, so I had to wait two years from the last 6105 that I got until I can go to the class. Yeah, what so, was the 6105 for? The first one... Okay. God, I'm not gonna go into details, but the first one was over a group chat when the social media thing was really big, the N word, all that stuff. We were all men can poop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ninja, then, ninja, ninja, ninja. Yeah, and uh, uh, hi, what up, my ninja? We're just we're just a bunch of NCOs in a group chat. Someone added a Lance Corporal in there. We were all like, you know, like joking around and whatnot. Uh -huh. But him and I came to the fleet together, you know. But then he was a oh, dirt okay. bag. I ended up getting promoted. He called me a Pakistani and camel, whatever, you know, I called him the N-word because he was like, oh, yeah, I was born in Africa. I'm like, this is not even black, by the way. Anyways, the kid wanted to get out of the unit. He thought if he made an EO complaint saying like, you know, I can't, you know, be here because um. I feel uncomfortable. He didn't drop names, but huge investigation. Next thing I know, there's screenshots of the group chat with the investigating officer and you're like who's haji abe with the turban i was like that's literally the name that they gave me in a group chat for, before you guys come for abe i mean that's how marines joke around yeah that, that's, it that's, is that's literally normal. the most racist unprofessional sexist yeah. we're aware we're aware but we do it you know yes. and back then it, it was more okay what they didn't the marine corps didn't crack on it as much they were just starting to and we were just like all oh, like brother like like just a bunch yeah of you're a family that's just how you are yeah so we were yeah. just joking around we always make like racist jokes against each other they make egyptian jokes osama jokes wh whatever it's kind of like whatever you know like it's lighthearted. <laughs> we, we all know like how we are <laughs> yeah Wow, Barry, we gonna go there. Huh? We gonna go there. Oh, Listen, we gonna go there. I'm not there. saying I made any jokes and stuff. Damn, dog. We had an Indian guy who'd be like, yeah, yeah like, like from India, uh, or like Native American, like from India. You know, I was like, okay. and I'd be like, oh, I'd be like, what's up, Seven Eleven? He'd be like, I don't know, what's up, Nine Eleven? You know, we, damn. <laughs> we just joke like that, you know. See, I'm sorry, it's just funny. Yeah, yeah. So I got a six hundred five because of that. Yeah, um, they just call me milkweed. 
the time. <laughs> Milk oh weed. Yeah, so I got a 615. Luckily enough, I didn't lose my rank. My command was right there. Like, you know, this spoke on my t- character and whatnot. The, not like the other Marines character. Luckily enough, I got away with just a 6105. Yeah. Thank God. It was a meth level investigation. So, oh, oh, damn. Yeah, I was, they were like, yeah, you just got married to a super motor corporal. You're about to be a Lance Corporal again. Damn. Um, yeah, so that took a big toll on so me. So mentally, you're really like, yeah. ouch. I, I, that, that, because a Marine will look at a 6105, and as a SAR major, I've seen it. Yeah. They will be devastated. Yeah, yes. and then the thing is also, a few months before that, I tore my ACL. You Okay. So I went from running a 1600, uh, 60 minute, three mile, 300, 300 CFT, all that stuff, and being known for that NCO, they're just going to take the platoon out and slay them. Now all of to, a sudden, you're racist. Yeah, <laughs> so now my, I can't PT. <laughs> I have negative paperwork, so now I'm like, my goal, again, being a drone, I was like, how the fuck am I going to go be a drone soldier? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was like in a really bad spot then. Mm. And then a couple months later, I was sick as a dog. They wanted to go out. I was like, I, hey, guys, I can't go out, whatever. Like, hey, it's a going away. Let's just take a picture outside the barracks. Took a picture outside the barracks. I didn't know there was a Marine in there that was underage drinking. He didn't have a drink in his hand or nothing. Someone from company ratted on him, made him... Alligate on his own self. This was in Okinawa, right? Yeah. Yeah. Every NCO in that picture, which is every single NCO in my shop, got a 6105. Wow. And I tried to fight it, and I was like, I, that kid didn't have a drink in his hand. I was like, I walked out, took a picture for going away, and I went back to my rack. So I got a 6105 for that. Fast forward the night before I was leaving Okinawa, um, I signed. You know, I close the investigation, and then the investigating officer goes, "Oh, you know, we we disclosed everything with the the other guy." And he's not content with whatever, whatever, whatever. They're only getting a six one five, and then he said that you also tried to assault him. So now these are these are the allegations against you. You know you can sign a six one five now and write your rebuttal, or um, you can try to fight it. But then you're gonna be it all can out longer. Mm. And I was just like, That's give me the. They fucking get I was you. like, give me the fuck out. I was like, I'm literally flying out of Okinawa in like 12 hours. So here I am at 1900 in some major's office, topping up a rebuttal. I was like, whatever. And then I came to the states, and then that's well. One thing about sixty one oh fives too, and I know it's like a little bit off topic, but like Marines will always sit there and say, I, "I'm not going to sign it." And to everybody out there, if you're in the Marine Corps, I would strongly recommend against that um, because as soon as you don't sign it, you rebuttal. forfeit your right to make a rebuttal. Mm-hmm. Okay, the thing with the sixty one oh five is y- you literally cannot stop it. Okay, it can't be stopped. It's administrative. Yeah, it's negative, but it's it's not like judicial you're not you know it is it is a form of punishment but it's administrative okay so if you don't agree with it you should definitely sign it you should definitely go speak to a lawyer like they're always advising marines right um and even some marines that you trust maybe they've been through something similar like an abe (coughs) and then you make your rebuttal and um i'll tell you because i read every single one of them and there was times where it's like yeah i don't i don't think so Mm -hmm. you know i talked to the ceo whatever the case is anyways but the 6105s, a lot of people in the Marine Corps, and you tell me as a Sergeant Major, 6105s are career enders, yes. or are they? Depends on what they're for, and that's what it comes down to. It really, yeah. I mean, it's situational. It, your MOS is a variable. You are a variable. When, the era, the time, the command, the culture, right? Because when you get a new commander in there and you start going, I would tell my COs, I'd pull them in, hey, Sir, ma'am, you need to be sure that this is what how you want to handle this issue because if you don't handle this like this from this point forward, you are creating a request mast issue. Yes. Okay? You yeah. got to be fair and equitable. Doesn't mean it's always got to be the same. But you got to be able to damn sure justify it. You know, and that, and then uh luckily enough on my uh you know, all the stuff got situated, I got promoted, you know, I just got promoted like 3 months later to sergeant because my yeah. pros and cons dipped you know, drastically from, from that last, from a transfer pros and cons of what I carried. So I picked up a little bit later than expected. It was still like a little bit over three years. Um, and then I was waiting in two years until, I, you know, ship out all that stuff, tore my ACL again. Damn, um, damn, dude. The same exact one. And then at the time I was like trying to recover. And then I got in a little conflict after deployment in the barracks. And I wasn't out, I, I can say that like, you know what, the other ones maybe like, yeah, I was in the wrong, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, I straight up wasn't in the wrong. Like I got in a fight. You know, because Marines were being stupid, tried to separate them. I got swung at, you know, I got held back a little bit later. Those same Marines, you know, ran into me in the freaking hallway, tried to fight. One of them got sent to the hospital, you know. I got, Abe seems like a scrapper. I got arrested. First time picking me from PMO the next day, you know. Your first time came and picked you up. Wow. Yeah, um, the company first time. And then 
their thing. Like, I wrote my statements, and I was like, I was genuinely just Marines were being stupid, throwing beers on a parade deck from third deck, you know, bottles and everything like that. I went to stop it, and then they tried to fight me. So I'm going to defend myself. It's not my fault that he was overly messed up. Did you get in trouble? Well, they wanted to give me a 6105, and that's when my company gun stepped in. He was just like, he's about to go to drone shock to school in like eight months. You give him that 6105, he can't go for two more years, you know? So I ended up getting a nip lock, and I had to give like a, a class, whatever, in my shop. But that's the but, type but, of- But, you know, the reality is people are laughing because it's like, you shouldn't even have gotten in trouble. Exactly. Right? You're trying to do what we want everybody to do, which is get What's freaking, right? don't be an idiot. And, and that's exactly, and then it got so bad in my unit to the point where like we had duty and then we had rovers on every single deck. This was in Camp Hamilton? Yep. What then, unit? Uh, 372. Oh, of course. And then we had- 22 areas rovers, different and fucking all these guys Wait a minute, but 372, you guys were up on the hill, right? Yeah, but they live by, live by the gym. area, by the gym, right? There. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Barracks yeah, yeah. by the gym. Yeah, barracks so by the gym. We got motor team marines pulling fire alarms. Who are amazing? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, pulling yeah, fire alarms. Yeah, motor team. Pulling fire alarms, you know. So the, to the point where the fire department. We were there coming. for that time. Yes. We yes. Were there. They were like, they were like, we're yes. not coming. You know, you go on a parade deck like, in the morning after a weekend, glass everywhere. You know, and like you got Marines pouring beers, pissing off a third deck. Wow. You know, so when you're a sergeant, you know, you're kind of like one of the most senior guys there. Like I was a sergeant for like, what, three years then? And I'm like, you're like, oh, we're going to throw bottles off third deck. You know, we're going to pull the fire alarm. Obviously, I'm going to step over there. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing type thing, you know? And when I try to stop it, you know, like, they're like, oh, what the fuck are you going to do about it, sergeant? You know, three little land scopes. Like, well, bitch, I'm about to fucking wish you were never fucking here, you know? Mm -hmm. And they were drunk. I wasn't. So one of them got sent to the hospital. Because he swung at me. So my thing is like it's self-defense. And my, my company gun stood out for me. And like that is a good leader right there. Can I tell you what I would have told you as your sergeant major? Yeah. Hell yeah. You never try to talk sense into a drunk Marine. No. Nope. Boom. Ain't never going to happen. I'm not saying call PMO. I think you did the right thing. But, you know, just a good rule of thumb. That's the secret squirrel trash where he's talking about. You never try. Because... Have you ever They're tried? They're not gonna listen. You, you no. send a kid to the hospital, Abe. And then, and then, the, yeah, and then the reason he, he had a couple of he so? had a couple of fuzzy navels. Yeah. So he smelled you said, the bottle cap. This is a Shirley <laughs> Temple's. You know. And then Abe was like, dotted him. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, so they the reason we went up there, you know. Yeah. Because we're like, we're like, hey, we're not gonna. Abe is flexing. Whatever. He's a lot of flexing. So the reason I got long arms. So I'm but like, he's <laughs> very tricep. <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. But the thing is, this they got there was a brawl up up there. So me and another sergeant, we ran because we were chilling. We ran up and we tried to break it apart. And while I'm breaking it apart, they just like fuck you, hit me. And I was like, you, I was like, I'm gonna get you one day, you know, whatever. I was like, I know exactly who it is. And then you know, it all died down on my way out. You know, the kid goes like, oh, you're the punk that got in my way, blah blah. blah you know, I was like, bro, I was like, I was like, y'all that like y'all fucked up. Go to your rooms. I'm not trying to do this with y'all right now. And he's like, what? A kid grabs me, another one punched me in the face, another one was running at me, and as he was running, I just like, rocked him. I think he just hit the concrete the wrong way. Yeah. You know, that's why I ended up going to the hospital. But, you sure. know, it started, that started another brawl, and I was like, okay, I got three dudes or four dudes like trying to freaking fight me, so, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, obviously, I took a few hits myself, but... I think that's good training. Technically, I mean, jump. Marines fight. Make map. We all do it. I'm going to say, when I, but I, when I lived in the barracks, we didn't have cell phones and stuff. So, you know, you had a phone watch... And if your NCO called the duty hut, you better be in your room, number one. Number two, you would have thought I was a Jehovah's Witness in there on Halloween. Because my blinds were shut, the lights would be there. If you heard someone over here, doom, 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 I'd be like, shh. Okay. They'd come get you. Yeah. Come clean the duty hut. Straight up, Chinese field day. Yeah. I know it's racist, but that's what we call it. <laughs> Chinese field day on the duty hut. I'm just yeah. like a brand new private. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Shit. You try Fabulous to do you try, you, you try to do that. You try to do that in first supply battalion. Like your ass was gonna get an investigation. If you try to not if you have to do it, be like, hey, let's go. We need to clean. Do, do try to do that shit. I guarantee you. It was you crazy though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, and then, and then you know the you know what the you know what the problem was? Yeah, like that no. Marine will call the Marine will call the like the staff and see oh, the duty has me or the city. Well, my me. first unit made the times, the Marine Corps Times for hazing. There was an incident where we had tied a kid up to a chair, taped him to a chair, and then pulled him up on a crane. Oh, what and the, the tape broke. He's, the... he's just strapped up to this chair. What you're the... just pulling him up on this hoist, which goes like 50 feet in the air. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're up there, dog. You're up there, you're up you're up there. there, bro. He wasn't that high. I think maybe he, you know, 10, 15. No, it wasn't even five, that. maybe max six. 
see. He got the, the, the tape breaks, hits the back legs, cracks his head open, oh. went to medical and told the, spilled the beans. And because uh, we were doing it was, you know, God, we taped kids up in between two mattresses in the barracks and throw you up the second deck. What's up, dog? You want to get mouthy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so hey, um, so obviously you scare shitless. You put in your package. You no, yeah. you, I'm, when I mean that you scare shitless is because obviously you got all this shit going on, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you like, man, my life's fucking dream is about to go down the drain. How do you feel once your package finally got approved? Like you got a school seat for drill instructor school. Um, I was just, I was honestly just excited for it. My biggest concern at the time was my torn ACL. Um, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was like, fuck it, I'm not going to do the surgery again. If I get the surgery, it's going to hold me back. I was like, I'm not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. Went on deployment. The Sergeant Major, I don't know if you know Sergeant Major Hammer. Mm -hmm. um, he was he was like, hey, dog, he's like, I tore my ACL before. I went the second time as a first sergeant, and that was painful for me. Like, you should get the surgery. So I came back from deployment in, like, September time frame. O end of October, I got my surgery again, and then I had to get off of limited duty. I was only on light duty slash limited duty for five months, and they cut me off short. So I can run my PFT and CFT yeah. for my 90 day, whatever. And then I ran a PFT again for DI school. It's funny you bring that up though, because that was a big fear that I had going to DI school. You know, I didn't think that I wouldn't make it, but I'm like, you know, you, what, are, what are you gonna do if you're on a wet log in the O course? Yeah. You freaking slip and tear an ACL. Like yeah. that thought is in all of our mind. Cause it was very PT intense. Yes. Yeah. Very like, you know, so I'm sure that that was something that was on your mind. But my thing too, kind of what, what Albert was touching on a little bit, like, a lot of people would have probably just been like, maybe it's just not my time. Maybe it's not right. for me. I you I never felt it. that way. I couldn't do it. And and, and that, that brings me back to what I said earlier. I was like, I never lost that of the fuck. And people told me like, what if you tear ACL again? I was like, well, I know. That. Then I know that I gave it everything and my yeah, body just exactly, cannot keep up. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm not going to hold myself. Like, I'm not going to hold myself back because of the what ifs. Because I might regret that way later on later on in life. Yeah. You know? So... so so, okay, so now both of you guys mm -hmm. have approved packages. Yes. You guys are about to go to, to drill instructor school. Mm -hmm. How the what was harder for you, Jasmine? Was it the mental preparation or the physical preparation to go to DI school? Honestly, I kind of was happy because before becoming a drill instructor, I was on the island for two years as a chief, as a supply chief. Oh, so mind wow. you, okay. I prepared myself. I okay. generally yeah. was running Paris Island. I was running their PFT. You're I was watching. doing their CFT. Okay. I went to DI school and I'm like, hey, Gunner Sergeant, so-and-so, can I get the teachbacks? What would you recommend for me to do? How can I prepare? So when he says wow. he was yeah. screaming in his car, I was doing the exact same thing. I was Dang, screaming in crazy. my car, counting myself down. I would actually go to DI school and, hey, can I, can I get to see what BDR looks like? I was trying to prepare myself so when I went, not that it was too easy, but I wasn't blindsided like boot camp. Gotcha. And what Jasmine's talking about, guys, she threw something in there real quick, a little Marine Corpsism, BDR, basic daily routine. That is what the drill instructor, it's a schedule. It's, yes. it's just what it sounds like. From morning, when the lights come on, there are legitimate things that you have to accomplish with the recruits, whether it's accountability, training, or all that uh, rolled into one, up until the lights go out and the recruits go to bed. Yes. And if they're a Paris Island, the drill instructors go to bed with them. Anyways. Okay, we're not. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I'm so tired, recruits. I'm kidding. Okay, so, so, but I do have a question, right? Because you weren't, you were here in Camp Pendleton, right? Yeah. Okay, so what would be your advice? Because obviously you had the inside scoop, mm. and you kind of—I mean, you kind of took it to the extreme. But <laughs> I want to reach the Marine because you—you you probably see him. You both are senior drill instructors, right? Yeah. And not everyone has that internal drive that you guys had before going to the drill field. Right. I trust me, as a realtor, I talk to a lot of Marines that are coming to the DI school mm -hmm. and they he reached out to me he's like hey man like I, I need a home I'm about to be there it's like man how about you graduate drill instructor school first well first of all not everybody becomes a senior and when I went through my time we always talked to the drill instructors that did nine cycles there is a it is very common for drill instructors at least when I was there a very long time five cycles never get a black belt you go on quota yep like yep. you're just kind of you're not bad you're, but you're not getting a black belt, and, and thank you for your time. Yeah, well, we're we're getting uh, we're gonna get all that stuff because you said a bunch of things that you know I want people to understand. My question directly is like, for that drill instructor man that just got hissed, mm -hmm. 
What would you say to them in order for them to get ready for the iSchool specifically? Definitely specifically. And, you know, regardless of what coast you go to, you're going to do the exact same thing. Make Marines, regardless of what coast you go to. But let's be honest, weather comes into play in Paris Island. If you go in the summer, it's going to be humid and hot. So you better be ready to acclimate to the weather pretty quick. If you go in the winter, it's going to be cold as shit so you better be ready to yeah, so maybe you're stationed in a camp pendleton run in that environment so so that's a great question if you're stationed in camp pendleton me my advice because when i came from paris island i went to first supply battalion yeah what i did to prepare to come here for hikes um they were on a roll at first supply battalion on doing yeah. hikes three six yeah. nine ten twelve twenty and i was the company first sergeant so sometimes i had to lead the hikes and i was like dang this is gonna come clutch when I go back over here to the West Coast and do the hikes, because your biggest things are, hey, the hikes, the hips in a female. I had fractured my hips in Paris Island, so I knew Damn. I was already coming yeah. in with injuries that I'm like, hey, I'm not saying I'm the best of the best, but probability of getting injured once again is possible. Because I mean, it's higher. I'm it just older, is. Higher, yeah. right? I'm older, but I'm staying physically fit. How it's old are you for everyone out there? 30. Okay, I know I'm not supposed to ask that. You guys are gonna <laughs> fucking, yeah. whatever. But, but that's one of the things... Me being an MAI, I was very in tune with running McMap courses, running Radio Tower. I was very active, so I knew myself to physically prepare for the West Coast. Sure. Um, so I can say that difference is preparing for training. Weather's a big deal. Weather, environment, culture, okay. it matters. Okay, what about mindset? M mindset, Abe, because you probably get uh, as a, as a, uh, a senior drone instructor, you get those drone instructors like, yeah, I'm here. Mm. I'm here so I don't get fined, essentially. You mm. know, it's like, it's like I'm here because the Marine Corps told me I need to be here. Mm. Um, my biggest thing is uh, be <laughs> humble. Like, you know, I'll always give the respect to like, you know, we have staff soldiers that are selected to be gunnies, whatnot, but they're fourth hats. I'm a senior, so they're going to be like, whatever, like, like, good morning, senior instructor. Like, I'm like, I'm a good morning gunner. You know, like that mutual respect, be humble. Like, okay. we already you know if you have 12, 13, 14 years in the Marine Corps, you know, or you have five years of me in the Marine Corps, I understand that. As a senior, yeah. I'm going to acknowledge that you have more Marine Corps experience, but I have way more deeper knowledge than you do, you know? And as long as we have that mutual respect, so be humble and just be hardworking, you know? I always tell people, it's like, the depot is what you make out of it. Like, you're two on a depot, and you're the master of your own fate. You're either mm. going to be, you know, whack, and, like, you're not going to move up. And then you're just gonna be like suffering and then eventually go on quota and you're gonna be like that uh just another drone instructor or you're gonna work your ass off for like two cycles move up is this a professional way of abe are you saying that as a senior drone instructor you got to put your foot in the rear end of some new drone instructors who maybe they're a senior staff sergeant maybe they're a senior gunny or just a gunny period and you're like hold on dog you know, because when I was in DI school, they told us every day, the only thing worse than a child molester is a weak drill instructor. Yep. <laughs> and I know that sounds really bad. And I'm not going to say who it was because we follow each other on Instagram, but he was like, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, the biggest thing is just like being humble. Like, I, I honestly don't, because, you know, and when, when I get someone that's like very like arrogant and whatever, I'm like, dog, I don't care. I, I don't care what the, f I don't care what deployments have been on. I don't care whatever. That's not what we're doing here. You know, we're training recruits. We're making Marines. Yeah. So get back out there. There's you know? a culture on Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego and Paris Island. Yep. Yes. And, you know, I know a lot of guys, it's because you, you get a lot of people, they'll come and they'll be, I'm a Marine, I'm a Marine, I'm a Marine. Mm -hmm. Whenever I would hear people say that, I would think, you're a Marine, but you are going to buy into the climate and the culture yes. here. Yeah, and the thing is, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to, uh, you don't have to earn my respect. I'm going to, sure. when you come across the street, as a person, Marine, I don't care what rank you are, yeah. I'm going to respect you for the simple fact that you're a human being, you're a man, yeah. you have an experience, you are a Marine, and then because you're a gun, you're a staff sergeant, whatever. So I'm going to give you that respect right off the rip. What Are you a sergeant? S staff sergeant. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, so so you give me, so as long as you're giving me that respect back because of the billet that I'm holding, we're going to be fine because my job is to train you, mentor you, and make sure yeah. that you have all Abe's the tools. not saying it, but I feel like he's yelled at a couple gunnies. Okay. And there, I said it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he he didn't like, deny uh, it. I feel like he hasn't denied it yet. Guys. He hasn't denied it yet, guys. Okay, but but the the reason the re I think you bring in a very good point because regardless of where you are in your Marine Corps career, you get sent. And this is the I think this is the main problem that people have whenever they go to the drill field. I don't know. Never was a drill instructor. Never will be. But it's because you in the fleet is so easy to be the shit. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it comp- love, compare, yeah, I compare, like that one. compare, 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 you say that right, but that's not true. So someone said the best the other, like a few weeks ago told me I'm like, well, you know, uh, drone shots are like the top ten percent. He's like, no, it's a ten qualifying percent. And I was like, he's right, he's not wrong, you know. Well, and I've seen what I mean change. is, yeah, you have your dirt bags, you yeah. have your bottom feeders, you know, you got the weak ones. <laughs> yep. But I, these guys are just water walkers. Oh, yeah. They're still. Carlos Ruiz, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. We were there together. I mean, yeah, these guys, and you were just like you're, and you're around these guys, and that's what was sticking out to me. Yeah, okay, this guy he sucks, whatever. The, got it. Those are the ones that stuck out yeah, to me, yes. and it makes Marines like you and you and those of you out there who are thinking about it that you shouldn't think about it no more. You need to put your freaking. You need to talk to your career planner because I'm tired of this. You don't talk to your career planner. You don't even know when the hist list comes out. Right. And then you're going to get histed and your career planners is up there laughing like, yeah, dog, I told you, you but known. you didn't pay attention in the career planner yeah. interview, blah, blah, blah. But it makes you step up your game and it makes you better because you're surrounded by those, exactly. those um, examples. Yep. Was drill instructor school. In Paris Island, right? Was a whole different other beast. Um, literally takes you back to recruit training. Literally the instructors were the cream of the crop. They were the the drill instructors, school instructors. You were like, holy crap. Is this what my senior drill instructor is going to be like? Like, this is insane. Mm. At least for us, PT was a mandatory thing every single day. I know the matrix kind of changed for DI school now here, but 2017, PT was the thing. Like, it was, that's what it was based off of. You were marching to and from you know, your squad base. God forbid you were late. God forbid your canteen was not marked. Oh, your car- canteen not marked? All oh, you show up your canteen. Two minutes. Run. Can't even make it two minutes to the squad base. Like, you better, you know. Did you have any squad instructors that stuck out to you that you remember? Yes, all of them. All of them. Why? Because they did their job to actually hone in to what they were teaching or what they wanted to be known for. So the okay. PTI. PTI, Gunnar Sergeant Thompson, slay, big, massive guy. And I'm like, oh, he can't run. 13 minute, three miles. I was like, bro, what the? Sorry, so, you know, wow. it's set the example, <laughs> lead by example. That's why my eyes like, were like, wow, is this what the streets are going to be like? They're really going to set the example and yeah. be the example for us. And we have to perform regardless yeah. if we're tired or not. So they set the example and they held you guys accountable. Oh, yes. yes so yes, how, yes. how was it for you here in the, in the West Coast? I honestly thought it was, it wasn't anything that I did. I thought I was just going straight back to recruit training. And that was your mentality. Yep, that was, that was my mentality. So okay. the fact that like later in the evening, you know, like I had some free time to like be on my phone, like do my little, you know, tea cards and like all that stuff, you know, um, it was honestly, it was, it was honestly what I expected. You know, my biggest fear, like once again, was my knee trying to make sure like I just go through that. Um, but my, yeah, cause you were, can't even wear straps or anything, right? Cause of no. uniformity. Yeah. So like Damn. my, my. My instructors were pretty like. Oh, I would have loved to see if Abe tried to come out with a knee sleeve on or something, man. <laughs> that, wow. Well, the I'd be like, wow. Well, the, <laughs> well, the thing is, so those things don't actually like. If you have an actual injury, those things are not meant for that. Like, you gotta have like an actual customized. But I have it, you know. Sure. But that's only the first few months because they want your knee to be strong enough on its own. So I was like, I'm yeah, not gonna. Yeah. I can't wear a, a brace in front of recruits. So I'm not gonna fucking wear one here. Yeah. But my instructors, I remember. I remember being online, Third Deck Hotel Company. They were up north, so it was empty, and like they were showing us how the deck should be ran. So we had our RTO instructor in the middle of the deck, and all the squad instructors supporting, and that was intense. Like even as a like experienced sergeant standing on line, I'm like, God damn! I was like, that's how we're running the deck should be. So when I went to the to the trenches, I was like, I need to be. I would just picture them, you know, and mm. I was, that's what I just the image I tried to like emulate, mm. you know. When I was running the deck, you know, the fourth hat, knowledge hat, J senior, everything. What would you to say? is the most important thing out of the high school that marked you guys that you guys still hold to this day in you guys's uh um you know career as a drone instructor work ethic 
What and, does that mean? Um, just just understanding that you're you're never that good. You mm. know, you can always be better. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like why you know the brand Skinny Kings. You know, like if you go to a gym, you know that you're never big enough. You always want to get uh, bigger, whatever. Um, and drill, like understanding, like they, yeah, like drills, like whatever. Singing cadence, we joke about it all the time. But you are, you control the whole platoon by your cadence, by your command presence. Um, so your work ethic, just being good at running the deck, all that stuff. And then you know when you move up, having you know, cause. It's a damn shame when you well, see. But first of all, what do you think about drill? Because every time we post about drill instructors, I get this one guy. Drill master. Okay. And he's always like, no, but seriously, he's like, we should do away with drill. We don't need drill. We could teach Marines. If we take out drill out of Marine Corps uh, what recruit is the training, Marine Corps? Well, out of Marine Corps recruit training specifically, you can shorten it down probably to like a month and a half. What do you got? You guys are there. You've been, it's current for you. You're on your second tour. You're wrapping up your, your first, which is a long time. What do you say to the people out there who are grunts? You know, flick a cigarette off your chest. You know, OIF, man. We <laughs> drill. What do you say to them? We get that all the time. Okay. At least I get that on my comments all the time. Crazy, crazy is that they did come from that, right? They were, they were trained and regardless of what coast they came and did drill as well maybe they didn't like it maybe they sucked at it but I let's be honest <laughs> drill is a form of discipline okay when you when you actually take a look at it and it's a part of teamwork uh, what is life without drill i don't know and my thing is like okay so like let's take drill out but i promise you if you post one of those pictures of someone like doing a wrong face and movement or like promotions what are you gonna do they're gonna laugh at them. They well, yeah. well here, I'll tell you. And here's here's the thing. They they fail to realize that when they show these commercials of other countries that are our near peer threats, what do they show? They They're show these. Shit. Yeah, they show them marching down the highway with yeah. missiles and yeah, yeah, yeah. information, perfect alignment. Convoys. Why do they do that? Yeah. yeah. Why do they do that? Right? Because it's it's a visual. Yeah. Right. And there is a lot. And I did a video on it. You know, just the 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 purposes of drill. And it's you know, I had a female. Um, I've had a lot of them, but um, she was very timid, and I put her in a position to be more confident, and I started with drill. Confidence, and I didn't yes. put nobody out there. I was the first sergeant at the time. Hey, check it out. Come here, Marine. All right, I'm going to show you how to do this, then we're going to go out there, then I'm, you know, I'm not going to let you go out there and look stupid, basically, right? Mm -hmm. All right you feel good? Yes, first sergeant. Okay, now let's try it. And every day, we'd have her out there. Before you know it, NCO of the quarter, NCO of the year, Meritor she promoted. She's like up there, dog, still doing it and still crushing it. Mm -hmm. Would I love to give all the credit to Drill? Yeah, I don't know what she would say, but it's just one example. Yeah, and builds confidence. If Drill, if Drill is done right, that's why I said like it's very important. If it's done right, you instill so much confidence yeah. and unison within. So how we do it in San Diego is what you're saying. Pretty much. No one wants to die. What? Oh, <laughs> what? <Yeah>. Okay, so. <laughs> So uh, bring it, because obviously I'm a Paris Island man. I ain't going to let them. I ain't going to let, let them see. First of all, first country. of all, Paris Island's where it's at. Paris Island, get a little country you, out there. Paris Island. You low, wreck your guys. lip. How to low, okay. how to lip. Where the real Marines are made. They don't so, even say, yeah. so let's, um, let's, my question to you is, okay, so drill instructor school, you guys passed it. Mm -hmm. um, no problem. Now, in drill instructor school, do they set realistic expectations of how your job is going to be conducted no no they tell you about it but you're never actually going to fully experience it and then everyone does this whenever they go to rto week which is you know like the very last week when you're actually yeah. in the trenches and everyone shit i folded my third day doing rto week i was like i'm about to do this for three years well because the purpose you know? of drill yeah. instructor school is to train you to be a drill mm. instructor when you become a drill instructor now your job is to make marines mm -hmm. and it's a lot different yeah, okay. and because of the, the the amount of instructions you have to get, you know, you don't, you're not on the boys, twenty four seven, you know. But when you go to the trenches, like holy shit, I've been awake since three o'clock. It's midnight right now. I gotta be up in two hours, you know. Yeah. Um, and sound and mad. Hopefully, like, it, hopefully you sound upset. <laughs> you have even. You know, guys, I, I remember. It's time to get up. I remember we we <laughs> had we had on we were on rotations for fire watch every single night. Yep. And then at three o'clock, you know, I, I slept from like one thirty to three o'clock. And then I'd wake up, work fire watch. I come back. I tried to drink some tea or something, but my throat would hurt so much. I didn't even want to eat or drink anything, like nothing. And I would just shower real quick, shave my head. Yes, I used to be bald, you know, um, all that stuff. And then I'll be standing there looking at my watch to tell fire watch to like start. And I'm literally counting down from like 10. I'm like, fuck, my throat is about to just 
the ex- that first scream. You, sure. You know it. That first scream in the morning is the worst pain of ever. Not had. everybody knows, but I know. I yeah. know. I'm just like, <laughs> I, she said, I know. Susan. <laughs> you know? And then I just, you know, turn, like, turn on the lights, you know, whatever. I'm like, whenever you're screaming lights, 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 you know, you're like, fuck, here we go again. What about drill instructors Not- on social media, drill instructors with their cell phones? I see comments endlessly. You guys shouldn't let be me, on there. Let me let me say something and let me Go tap ahead. on that real quick because I they're like how do you have time? What are you doing? Why are you not on the girls? And that's what happened my first tour. And that's the reason the first tour I stopped my TikTok a little bit because, you, you know. Just, it was just the haters. No, no, no. Like a concerned civilian when I was a senior drone instructor with Kilo Company at Paris High emailed the CG and said, you have a senior drone instructor that's not on the recruits, but it's a senior drone instructor and they should be taking care of of the recruits what happened it blew up my battalion had me come in and delete some of my tiktoks because they're like mind you no recruits in sight they were marching back from pt i was going to take a shower so guess what i have a little bit of time that's what they don't know you have time to where you can make something happen first of all i love i love it yeah i love this because it, it's like you're taking me with you right right I don't know. so it's one of those things where i tell them either you guys want knowledge because you guys always ask but god forbid do if damn if you don't damn if you do you guys want the knowledge and we're willing to give it to you but now you're complaining because i'm giving you knowledge and it's free knowledge coming from someone that's actually going through it right then and there yeah yeah what do you feel about it Abe? um i think a lot of people are just ignorant to the fact that you know some so like let's say for example like i want to make a tiktok it's going to take me like two minutes max right someone that's not used to using social media or something it might take them like an hour to make yeah. a video. So sure. to them, they're like, why is why is a drill instructor like whatever, whatever. As long as you're like me personally, if you're like in uniform or like whatever, you're just you shouldn't be posting TikToks like dancing and doing all this shit. If you're gonna be using your campaign cover, using your belt, using your uniform to be out there, do something. Be out there and be informative. Be out there to set an example. Be out there to send knowledge out. You know, and if haters are there, let them hate. I, I, I personally don't care. It I mean, is a drill instructor and, hazer comment. Oh, you must have so much time. Yeah, but they don't know that we do have Sundays where it's they go to church and what can we do? Draft up as much content as we can and post it throughout the week. Yep. Yeah, Very but true. you know, you know what, you know what the the reason why I feel that this is a, a huge issue. It's because different people have different priorities. Mm. Yep. And and what they don't understand is that both of you guys, besides also being drill instructors, you guys are also business owners. We will yes. touch upon. Uh, we will touch up, uh, on that, right? In other words, you guys are entrepreneurs. Every single person in this room is an entrepreneur. Yes. So our priorities, and we understand the power of social media whenever it comes to influence and whenever it comes to entrepreneurship. Mm. That's what a lot of people don't understand because yeah. their priorities are different. All of a sudden, is they're seeing this drill instructor they're seeing this marine gunnery sergeant sergeant major going and he's like oh well he should be leading marines he should be making recruits he should be out there with his freaking platoon Mm -hmm. it's like yeah we are (laughs) but we also understand our different priorities and we prioritize our task in order for us to make both things like you said earlier we don't have to pick one or the other both things can happen simultaneously say which you know it, it has some validity behind it. it's like well you're utilizing your uniform it's like man man Bro, get the fuck out of here i was damn tell you this man get the fuck out of here they're you haters, know what? dog you, because you know with or without uniform i can give the exact same knowledge with a bun in or with my hair straight i could tell you the exact same thing because i'm living thank you very that much life. i mean but the, here's the thing man people there's always going to be haters but it's like I can't tell you how many times I've literally gotten messages and they're like, I joined the Marine Corps because of some of your videos. Right. Yeah. Literally. Right. Literally, right. dude. They're like, I'm getting out now and I just want to say thanks. And I'm like, damn. They see these little videos. Yep. 15 seconds of you marching some recruits. And they're like, damn. Yeah. Like I could be one of those recruits right there. And you know what? People now, here's what a lot of, I think headquarters Marine Corps um, and a lot of leaders, a lot of leaders, I won't call them necessarily dinosaurs, but people that don't understand the real power of social media. Yeah. Um, they're going to go into social media and you cannot control. Leaders want to keep their their subordinates into this bubble in their command, that everything is yeah. perfect within their command and that everything yeah. is perfect within the Marine Corps. But they don't understand that something that you cannot control 
is them going on social media and seeing all these things. That's why I always kept it real with my my future Marines whenever yes. they were uh, future Marines because I understood, man, like, yeah, granted, you can try to keep them in a bubble whenever it comes to your command or you can try to keep them in a bubble. But the way that DMs are made nowadays. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, like, gives, yeah. it gives everyone a direct link to you, yes. to me, to yeah. you all. And, and when you're on active duty, and there's people like us or whoever it is out there that you follow, right? You should follow me. You should follow Albert. You should follow Abe. You should follow Jasmine, okay? And you're not in their chain of command. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not like, you know. Let me give you this example. Let me give you this example real quick. Marine, um, Marine, I think he's a sergeant. He just had a kid. So he just went through the 13 weeks of, uh, of you know, paternity leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he actually had orders um to an sda I don't, I don't remember which sda was it but i know he had orders to an sda and then he reached out to me he's like man my command is really screwing me or whatever it's like okay brother time out a second you yeah. know like talk to me a little bit more about what's really going on well i had a pft and i passed the pft and i was like okay what did you pass the pft with oh, i had a third class pft and i'm like okay is it um, weird that I don't know what that score is for that? Me neither. I think it's like, like, it has to, it has to be, it has to like, be within a 180, it has to be within a 180 to a 200. I always Hello. think 90. Yeah, like yeah, it's like a 90, 90 and below, because I think failing is like, what, one That's crazy. That's so, crazy. So it has, so it was low, right? And I was like, okay. And what happened? Well, they uh, they took my package out of, in order for As me to go. Should. And Yeah, and I was like, brother. Think about think about it from here. But he was pissed off because his command, um, his command was like, you know, he's been in his command for a while. Like he's a sergeant, like he knows. And I'm like, brother, but think about this, man. Don't you how would you think your command feels if they have a relationship with you? They've seen you grow throughout the Marine Corps. And then now all of a sudden, like you come back fat. You come back out of standards, and then you're trying to go to this billet that you're going to be holding, holding Marines accountable for it. Yeah. I mean, how would you feel if you were in their position? And then I'm, he was like, damn, you know what? Yeah. And I was like, and I'm sorry that's not the answer. If, if, because obviously you see yeah. my he, he was hoping you were going to say something else. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, fuck your command. Yeah, and this no, is like, no, nah, no. man, like, think about it, man. Like, it's like, the Marine Corps standard. You well, know what I'm saying? It, the, one of the most important questions that you're ever going to ask yourself when it comes to t sending Marines on recruiting or drill instructors specifically. I don't, I don't think, I think he was going to MCT. I think he was going to be Even an better, MCT, MCT, great. And like, I yeah, man, like, you got hikes, dude. Like, yeah. you got I would up. exclude MSG, but... Combat instructor, drill instructor, recruiter, do you want many versions of that Marine yeah. running around the Marine Corps? Yeah. If the answer is no, you need to find a way to articulate that in the package. But yeah. you know what he said? You know what he said? What? He said, uh, he actually wrote me today. He actually wrote me today and he's like, uh, Gunny, thank you. I, I don't know why people keep calling me fucking Gunny, okay? I'm not gunnery a gunnery sergeant. You're I'm not gunnery a gunnery sergeant. sergeant. I am gunnery a civilian. Sergeants. You're a double rocker shocker. <laughs> and, then, and then he was like, hey, Gunny, Thank you so much for the conversation that we had. And this conversation happened like a month ago. Yeah. It's like, thank you so much for the conversation that we had. Um, I took the PFT again. I didn't have a first class PFT by only four points. So I'm getting wow. better. Yeah. So I'm getting better and I'm getting, and it all started because of, because of the conversation that we had. That's you really put, things, you really put things into perspective. Yeah. I was like, brother, if you're putting in the work, the results will come. Keep yeah. doing what you're doing. You're gonna get that first class PFT, and you're gonna keep to you're gonna keep further in your career. Yeah, that's so good advice. Back, uh, uh, back to you, back to you guys. So they're not preparing. But what I'm telling you is like they're not setting. I'm not saying that they're not preparing you, but they're not setting realistic expectations of how the trenches are gonna be once you actually get to uh, uh to the to the trenches. Okay, so to set realistic expectations, what advice besides being humble? What advice would you give to those? first term drill instructors that this is going to be their first cycle what would you tell them yeah hey, like the uniform of the season have a, have multiple of them um have a plan for like make sure like all your personal stuff is taken care of before you come you know whether it's family whatever or your car is broken like whatever it is and um honestly a lot of it is just going to happen with the job you you can't learn to run and scream 
I, I knew that was gonna be said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't teach you Open to run mouth. and scream. The only way for me <laughs> to help you run and scream and have command presence is like freaking landing online ready move, fucking one thousand, and then you got a thousand count to make counts. You know, that's 100%. that's the only way I could think of. Like actually on job training, like you can't like I can teach you how to freaking package like or like wrap up a hamburger and cook it all all day. But you're never really gonna know how to do it and be efficient at it until you're behind the counter. Yeah, well, being out. a new drill instructor is like you got to have the intensity. Yes. And, yeah. You know, being out, being retired, and 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 being huge in fitness. I know you're huge in fitness as well. We all are. But I'm just saying, that's one of the biggest mistakes I've seen in 30 years of training. People are not intense. Go to your local yeah. gym, Demi not a Marine Corps gym. <laughs> yeah. Go to your local gym. The intensity's not there. Same thing with a new drill instructor. You got to bring that heat. You got to bring that passion. You got to have that fire. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Albert, it's got to be when you're tired. Yep. Everybody comes out of the gate hard. Yeah. yeah. Everybody comes out of the gate hard. And Everyone wants remember, to be a lion. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. A lot of people forget it's a marathon, not a sprint. You tend to sprint, you're going to get gassed out by F4 and you're going to be looking real dumb. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's something that you said. It's like everyone wants to be a lion until it's time to do lion shit. Yep. That's what happens in the Marine Corps. That's what happens in the fleet. And Everyone's you know, a lion until it's time to be I'm do lion shit. I'm sorry if I'm wrong for this. Not really. But you got to be pissed off. If you're not getting pissed off at the recruits because they're doing some dumb shit, you are a sergeant, a staff sergeant, a gunner sergeant in the Marine Corps, and this little yeah. maggot is not <laughs> listening to you, you should, it should be, take it personal. Because you're either going to be pissed off or I'm going to piss you off and the job's going to get done regardless. Yeah. Abe never calls him a maggot. He calls him recruit. By their last billet. name, recruit, private, billet, last PFC, name, or rank. You know. Okay, so for females, when it comes to female drill instructors, <laughs> um, what are some of the common trends that you see with female drill instructors? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I heard a little. <laughs> I heard a little. She's like, no, no. She about to, she about to start going like, yeah, listen, listen, I just, let me I'm, tell you I this. I don't want to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Jasmine's eyebrows were like, hey. We work together, so he knows. Okay. He knows exactly how I feel because he's seen my work ethic. Okay. I would say... Female drill instructors, I, I hate saying female drill instructors, right? Because we're all Marines, we're yeah. all drill instructors. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're so emotional. Emotion mm. is attached to them. What do you mean? Are we crying? Oh, yes. We're Stop. We're crying. Mommy, daddy games. We're playing mommy, daddy games. Senior drill instructor doesn't get it. They don't get it from their senior drill instructor. They're going to go to their chief, to their first sergeant. And they um, allow it. They're very <laughs> emotional. And they allow it. Yes, wow. they're very emotional and it's crazy because you ask for the experience, right? You ask for the experience to come and train these females. Yeah. My experience, like anybody else, if you're becoming, if you're going to become a drone instructor and you want to do it the right way, you will work. Like how he said, perfectly said, plan, have a plan. You know, you can't teach passion. I must say that right now. Yeah. You yeah. can't teach passion. Okay. I can try and tell you, have demeanor. Go run the deck. I'm going to watch and I'm going to tell you, pull you in, tell you what to do, come back, and I'm going to tell you if you did it right or if you need a little bit more, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I can guide you. I can mentor you. I can do this. But if you're not willing to work because you just want to be lazy and you believe because you're pretty, you're going to get by, that's that's not that's not the game we're playing. Oh. So it's a lot of emotion behind everything. It, so how use was, the chain of command. No, wait. Time out. How... What's the difference? Because I was in 4th Battalion where oh, you were man. at. Oh, man. You, you can't compare 4th Battalion no, but, drill instructors. But okay, no, no. but, but So you were in 4th Battalion yes. over there in Paris Island. And then now you come here, you're in 1st Battalion because yes. now we're mixed. So I went from 4th Battalion, um, November Company, to 3rd Battalion, Kilo Company in Paris Island. Okay. We were the first female COVID integration with the males. Okay. Then I came here, I did a cycle in Echo, I did a cycle in Mike, and now I'm with First. For those that don't know, what is, does that mean that you had male and female recruits next to each other? Male okay, and yeah, female? let's clear that, let's clear that up. Okay. We're not integrated like the army. So okay. in Kilo Company, we had three male platoons. And all male. All male, and three female platoons, all females. Separate decks, not sleeping together, not doing anything together unless it was PT sure. or Daily activities, as in going to the child okay. hall, marching together, and stuff like that. Okay. Now, you mentioned something very important. Back then, um, when you were in 4th Battalion, I'm talking about, you. it was all female. Even your oh, first yes. sergeants were females. Yes. So, when I first got there, they were females. My first my first, first sergeant, Sergeant Major Palmer now, amazing, amazing, amazing leader. He came from 3rd Battalion. He was our first male first sergeant at 4th Battalion. Yeah, how was that perceived? Oh, man. He came in with the, aye, aye, sir. 
I, I, ma'am. We're like, what? Because we used to only say, I, ma'am. I, I, sir. We never said, I, sir, because it was all female dominated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he came in trying to change things, you know, yeah. we were kind of against it like everything else, but we loved it. Why? Mm. Because we wanted the integration to happen. In Paris Island, it's not frowned upon, oh, males are coming. No, because we see them since day one. Yeah, we yeah. work together. We go to DI school together. It's nothing from another world. They're not like unicorns or aliens. Yeah. We're used to it. So we were actually like, okay, we want to see what the males can bring to the table. Well, how can okay. you make 4th Battalion November Company better so yeah. we can compete okay. against the males when it comes down to drill? Or yeah. what are your little tricks that you can show us for house procedures? Yeah, but I guess, I guess where I'm going with this is... The reason why I asked because you mentioned something is like mommy and daddy games. Oh, and yes. And you're pretty and you think that you can get away with it, right? No. And here, they do. Now here. Really? <laughs> now here. That, that's what I'm going with. Now here you have female mm -hmm. drill instructors, mm -hmm. regardless of their billet, going up to play mommy and daddy games with chiefs. Oh, yes. With, you know, maybe even company staff. I don't know. I, I don't know because I'm not there, yes. right? Yeah. But I'm asking you this. It's like. the higher up allow it yes um and it's gonna piss people off but you can tell how a female marine was brought up in the marine corps like how she worked her way up by her performance as a drone instructor mm -hmm. what do you mean by that so you can tell you know if you know if a female marine we have certain examples i'm not gonna lie i'm not yeah, gonna throw you can, names you can out there tell, yeah, no names if but you know you know because you can, everybody knows if yeah, you worked with us yeah you can tell like the like the female marines that got brought up because of the looks you know how to talk to males you know how to talk to higher ups you yeah. can tell like okay well that's how you were brought that's how you worked your way up in the marine corps you know and then versus the ones that like actually work. fucking work the ones that draw the boundaries the one that just put the uniform on just like everyone else like if they're doing it i'm doing it you can tell a big difference because when you're at your lowest when you're the most tired fatigued whatever that's when your true character comes out yep mm. and then that's when you see people like acting at a certain like situations mm -hmm. and that's just like and that's how you either get respect or can lose all respect mm. um you have some females missing out being the heartbeat of the platoon and going siq for 14 days where are you at wow now senior what? drone instructor has to fill in for senior drill instructor slash teaching drill slash mentoring and guiding the rest of the drill instructors slash taking care of these recruits. Are female drill instructors getting pregnant? Uh, there's a on quota on quota on quota, and that's the biggest. That, that's the how biggest. do you how do you even speak about that? Talk about it? Mitigate it? Like what do you? I mean, by all means, right? We all have our own opinion, but I feel like my opinion. MCRD has so many females that they're just on hold and it, and it sucks, right? Mm. Some of the females genuinely want to come and work, genuinely want to be drill instructors, genuinely want to wear the campaign cover and make Marines because sure. some of them join, you know, that's what they join for. Unfortunately, because there's not a female platoon on every company at this moment, you don't have the opportunity to. So they're putting six female hats to a team. That's a lot of drill instructors. That's a lot. That's a yeah, lot of drill instructors, lot. right? Especially if you have a platoon of 40 females, you know? Yeah. But now I understand when it's a platoon of 110 females, okay, we need it, right? Taskers, yeah. whatever the case may be. Do they get pregnant? Some of them do because they're on quota. So their their mentality probably is like, hey, I might never be a drill instructor. I wear the campaign cover, but get pregnant wow marine. so you could go be a drill instructor get pregnant and basically be on quota the whole time and get a and get an olive drab and khaki so ribbon. here's the thing so now i know they were talking about it they're pushing it yeah. to where you have to have you gotta four have four cycles complete mandatory. cycles to get it unless, unless, yeah unless you get a wow, waiver i love that uh, me yeah. too but yeah and then here comes <laughs> he again me too. <laughs> listen to this but then the battalion commander can sign a waiver waiving you from having those four cycles so there was mitigating factors yeah yes so, so and then here's where the you know, hi, like, you know, I got promoted, whatever. I'm ah. a drone instructor. Um, I have a drone instructor ribbon, but if you know, I'm like, you spent two weeks in the trenches and then you tapped out. Yeah. So Why do I feel that you have a name in mind? I have a lot of names. <laughs> he is leaning me in. Him. Let me he just, let very... me just. Yep. So I got. Abe is very, Abe is very tense. He's like, he's, you know, he's. And I'm gonna be straight up because even, he's seen it first. Even on the depot, yeah. I have no filter. I tell them she sees me at work, yeah. whatever. That's my biggest flaw. Whatever, I have no filter. Well, me it, too. Yeah, if you're whack as fuck, I'm gonna tell you you're whack as fuck. If you don't deserve this, if you suck, I'm gonna tell you. you suck. Has that brought you a lot of heat? Yeah, and I don't give a fuck what you're gonna do to me. 
What kind of hate, too. though? From higher ups, from your peers? Everyone. No, from their peers, like whatever. Like, if you suck, like, you know, I'm going to get rid of you. Or if you suck, like whatever it is, I'm just being honest with you. I'm going to try to help you to my best of my ability. But don't come in here and tell me, like, oh, well, I'm a senior. I did this. I did that. I'm like, dog, you did like two or three cycles, you know? Get the fuck out of my face. I don't care for the same billet. I don't care whatever, whatever, whatever it is. You know, don't don't compare. Like even though we're gonna have the same ribbon, don't fucking compare yourself to me. I don't put myself in your category. I don't deal with it. Don't come on my deck trying to act like you're a badass drone instructor. If I'm outside, like one my biggest pet peeve, and I'll blast drone instructors for this. I'm outside drilling with my platoon, right? Especially this last cycle, I'm outside drilling with my platoon. We didn't do it before we went up north, so we had to do it after the crucible during Marine Weeks. So we had to do final drill. And then some company was graduating. They just came back. They think they're the hot shit. I see some whack ass freaking drill instructors <laughs> coming up, making ineffective ass corrections on my fucking platoon. You know, drowning me out. And what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna curse on the phone like Joseph, get the fuck away from my platoon. I was like, you didn't scream all cycle at your platoon. Don't fucking do it on my platoon. Mm. And I have no problem with that. Okay, so so you do that. What's you? What's the usual response? I asked senior drill. It should be I. I senior drill sir, but nowadays it's. I'm gonna go cry and tell my first sergeant so my first sergeant could go talk to your first sergeant. And they can talk wow. to each other all they want. Mm. And you know, and this is why, you know, I am belligerent to a certain extent, you know, and this is why I'm a firm believer. Mm. You should always make yourself an asset in your unit. Even in a fleet, you're not gonna get fucked out. You're not gonna get TAD to be a gear guard or nothing like that. If you're mm -hmm. an asset, they need you. Well, first of all, let me just say something. If you're a green belt and you are making corrections purposely, drowning out a senior drill instructor that is disrespect yes, yes. automatically yes you're disrespecting me well, well i didn't understand that that's Can how we take it so if i am a senior drill instructor I'm, I'm drilling my platoon i'm out there whatever it is whatever i'm working on whatever phase it doesn't matter because my yeah. billet's higher than yours and Dr green belt drill instructor is coming over there causing chaos i don't even know who you are you're purposely drowning me out when a senior drill instructor comes on deck Soon as I speak a spoken word, all green belts stop talking. Yes. It's it's automatic. Yes. And for a green belt to not do that is disrespectful. And they know they're not doing it. Okay. It is right off the rip. Everybody sees it and thinks the same thing. Yeah. You're trying to disrespect me. So I just wanted to touch on that because like what Abe is yeah. saying, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I would have hauled to my platoon. We had a problem. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I and I guess, I guess, I'm gonna, I have to be the devil's advocate because I'm the only odd man out. Diablo. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I gotta be the devil's We're just advocate. In this. Jose for but here's, devil. here's the thing, right? Here's the way that I, this is the way that I look at it, not know it, because I know it's a culture, right? Mm -hmm. It's a completely different culture when it comes to that. But here's the way that I look at it. Me, I put myself in that position. I get told that I need to blast recruits. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm blasting fucking recruits, mm -hmm. and then. You come at me and then you blast me. I'm gonna tell you this. I got a big ass mouth too. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this though. I, I got a big ass mouth too, right? I'm just like, I'm just gonna tell you, man. Like, I'm gonna, gonna tell you see, with respect. Like, senior, I'm just doing my job. That's not a thing. I swear I would blast you again and embarrass you in front of all the recruits. Okay, but time, but okay, but time out. Here's the thing, though. I'm not a recruit, and I will. That's why. That's why I feel right that I wouldn't fit in because I'm like, okay, okay. but. Let but me, calm your me, ass fucking me, down because I'm not a recruit. Let me put it to you like this. We know that. I, I know what you're saying. We know I that. Do. Yes. It would just be like anything else if you knew before you did something, I know this is going to be disrespected yes. very. Yeah. You've got that knowledge. And then you do it. And now we both know it. Okay, but brand new drill instructor though. He teaches you to run and scream, right? But he also tells you to be effective. Courtesy. You oh, learn the courtesy okay. as well. You gotta be effective. If you're uh, being in effect, if you come up to my platoon and you're just making like solid like corrections, this, like, oh, your like, arms, yeah, arms, like you, you know, or like whatever, making the corrections, like you know, placing uh, them like elbow to the body, one point of black, whatever, and like you walk away like senior, like mutual respect. respect. I, like, I see you. Thank respect. you. Oh, but you talk about being all loud like, and shit. Me, yes. There's a couple things we're uh, skipping here. Yeah, yeah, you're taught yeah. as a drill instructor. At least I was as a drill instructor. Okay, you okay. never go by a single recruit without making a correction. Right. In his situation, what he's describing. Make the correction with respect, senior drill instructor. Yeah, I'm and acknowledging mind you, they, you. And mind you, his uh. his recruits were no longer recruits; they were Marines already. They were Marines oh. already. So why are you treating Marines like a yeah. fucking day oh, one recruit? Oh, okay, okay. But okay, now, okay, but okay, now okay. they've been, they just came from penalty. And now they're Marines. Why not? They want to be acting all cool and tough. Yeah, like we just got done with the cycle, you know. And you know, I'm I'm usually very subtle about it because like I'd be like, we're doing like right shoulder arms, and some brand new drone instructor comes in blasting feet out of watch forty five, and I was like, that's a forming day one. Correction. I was like, I was like. Well, um, yeah, if we're working right he, shoulder arms. Yeah, yeah, and I just go look at it like, I was like, is, is Fiat Watt 45 greater than right shoulder arms? No, sir. I just look at the regional instructor. 
Okay, so let's be effective, all right? And then we'll just hit it. The kids don't okay. even know, but the drone suck is like, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, Kyle. yeah. Yeah, because that, that's what I've heard. I've heard that um, sometimes when, you cor when you're when you correcting the platoon, it's really when you're correcting the drone structure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sometimes like, they'll be yeah. okay, I'm okay. running a deck, they're drowning me up. And then I, I'll tell the kids, I was like, I was like, when I start running a deck, all you quiet down, you know what I'm saying? Like, all you freaking, all of you are going to shut up. You know? If I'm talking of you, are going to shut up. But that's really true the drone structure. Yeah, mm -hmm. obviously all the crystal guys are like, yes, yeah, sir, whatever. But the drone are like, oh, shit, you know, we're driving out senior. Uh, okay. Something like, obviously, I'm not going to be disrespectful about it. But yeah. if you cross me the wrong way, I'm well, going to get Well, plus, you know, if you got a green belt and these, they're out there freaking crushing it. And they really, they're in the moment. They do yeah. not hear you. Yeah. yeah, you tell the difference. The okay. J will be stepping in. <laughs> you know, that's how it goes. I've had times. And then you're okay. like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. And then there was times where, like, they're just, like, whack as hell. Like, you just step on deck and zero it out. And then you're like, you know, I was like, how about we actually start being effective, all right? How about we actually start moving around and running? How much we actually scream for our life? Yeah. Okay. And then the this is like this is the last drill instructor question that I'm gonna ask, and then we're gonna move on to a different subject, right? Obviously, there's a lot of tension, and 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 as a drill instructor, you're tired, you're fucking your entire body hurts, you gotta perform always at your top. So you know, you're, you know, how do I say this? You you're very emotional you're very because of how yeah. tired you are right so so at your lowest is when you got to be at your highest essentially so i know that there's a lot of friction points yes brand new drill instructors looking or even drill instructors right now that are in the field right now how would they approach a senior drill instructor or how or how would they approach a person with a higher billet to correct something that they might feel that the higher bill is not doing effectively or correctly Okay, I'm going to answer mm. your question, right? Me personally. Very good. Every drill instructor I had, even in supply, in su this is where I got it from since a PFC. We brief in the morning and we debrief in the evening. I get it. You're tired. You're exhausted. You don't want to hear it. But me, to make my team work, dream work, because I'm here to listen to what you have to say, because at the end of the day, they're out there 24-7. Yeah. What do you need from me? In the morning, these are the goals for the these are the goals for the whole day. We're teaching this, 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 this for drill. This is what I want to hear. Because some drill instructors don't know. They're they're new from DI school and they're like, well, senior drill instructor, you know? And I brief them and I tell, Jay, what you got for them? Uh, Freaking Trey, what you got? Okay, cool. Evening, we come debrief and I'm like, where did we go wrong? Or did we go good today? How did we feel about today? Because we don't know each other the first days. Different personalities. We're going to cross each other in wrong ways to where we don't know each other's isms. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. we need to make sure we mesh, mesh together so we could come as a team. Yeah. I personally counsel all my drone instructors every Sunday. Every Sunday does not go missing. Either you're running BDR, you're coming. I'm going to counsel you on what you did the whole week. Oh. The whole okay. week, <laughs> this is what you did good. This is what you did yeah. bad. This is what you can improve. So my okay. communication skills with them... There's no way you can never come and not ask me a question. Like, I'll tell them, I'd rather you ask me a question than you just sit there and look dumb and be like. So, in other words, what you're saying is that if a drill instructor has a grievance with you specifically or anybody in the team, the moment to do it will be either in the morning or in the evening. Or, when through, you're or let's be honest, because some people break down middle of the day because... For some reason, they hit the wall at 12 p. At, at, at afternoon chow. Well, I'm just gonna say, like when I was there, that. you couldn't you couldn't speak bad on, right. on someone of a higher billet. Yeah. yeah, it didn't. It doesn't exist. Yeah, there, there is no opportunity for you. You're gonna play. I matter of fact, when I was a new drone instructor, I was a brand new fourth hat. My third hat was very very weak. I didn't. I mean, I could kind of. I mean, I I have eyes. I noticed a little bit, but when I really started picking up on it was when my J started having me do things to mm. kick more stress, kick more heat, run the deck. And I'll be like, Jay, he's out there. He'd be like, shut the, you know, shut up and go do what I tell you mm -hmm. to do. I, I, Jay. And I go out there, zero, you know? But in my mind, I knew like, they're messing with the third hat right now. Yeah. But I had, I would never have had an opportunity to speak out. And that's a huge thing. That's why I said, when I was at Paris Island, I couldn't talk to my senior drills, right? I couldn't even talk to my heavy. I'd be like, uh, third hat, a third hat. What, what are we about to do? You can't, you can't just do that. Coming here, different years, different environment. If you don't take care of it, oh, they're, F the Chiefs. They're going to automatically go to the first sergeant or sergeant major. Damn. So it's different now. It's Damn. very different. So me, I have to overcome and adapt and adapt to the ways of what the drill field is now. Okay. Are the female drill instructors like the shiny new toy? Oh, we're like the you the, know, the little unicorns. But you know, you know why it pisses me off? Because Paris Island is not like that. Yeah. For us, it's normal. 
Sure. Here, it's like your high vis all the time, especially when I first got here because I was one of the first female platoons at Echo Company. Mm. Constantly being seen, yeah, constantly person? being recorded, constantly, constantly. And I'm like, guys, this is nothing from another world. Like, we're doing it. In PI, we've been doing it for a while now. Do you think it's like, going to get better? It's gone way it's better. It's getting way better. It's gone it's way better, way better. Okay, but what about you? Like, like... I don't know, man, because here's the thing. Like, here's the way that I, I get it, and I get... Uh, guys, don't come at me. Or, Albert or you is guys triggered. Can, or you guys can. I don't give a fuck. But... <laughs> but Albert like, really don't, don't care come at like me. that. The reason for this, because... The reason because of what I'm saying is because you got to think about what we're doing to the Marines. Because we're... I get it. We're there to make Marines, but we're also there to make Marines that are in a... In, in a... In a B-billet, mm -hmm. better leaders for the mm -hmm. fleet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And whenever... You know, we shut down that line of communication to, I guess, make corrections or even establish a line of communication. You know, um, that's the, where I have an issue. And and yeah. I think that's why I changed a lot. And I'm a firm believer that being a senior drone instructor or holding a certain billet on a depot does not. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't um, wave, you know, like the basics of being a leader, like exactly. leadership principles. So like. You know, know your Marines look out for their welfare. You know, like yeah. I was like, I'm gonna know my team. I'm gonna know they have personal problems. I'm gonna know like, yeah. there's something going on. Um, keep your Here, Marines. Here, here's the problem. Here's the but problem. but let him finish. Let him finish. Okay. Okay. Keep my your bad. Marines my informed. Bad. All the trash. Obviously, there's a time and place. Like if I thought like, hey, go do this. You're not gonna stand there and argue with me. I was like, if I wanted to tell you why we're doing that right now, I would have told you right there. Okay. But in the morning or in the evening yeah. during scoop or whatever would have all the green bus in my duty hat that's why like hey guys like this is what i'm observing this is what i'm seeing is there anything that i need to do okay you know for my team stuff so, there's a time and place okay but i always make sure that like at some point if i have my hats to do something at some point they're gonna know the why or like hey bro okay. i need to do this because we need this real quick uh, okay. see, and, like they'll just hit it you know so i'm not gonna hold back i understand like back it used to be like oh they can't talk to so and so you know but i'm a firm believer that like we do with recruits uh, a brief recruit is a good recruit you know we'll brief them like the next event that's gonna happen whatever so we're kind of a little bit of a head mm -hmm. um same thing with your hats a brief drone instructor um that's a little pissed off is a lot better than a lost drone instructor not gonna lie my first first cycle the one thing i think that i grasped from it and i told the female i'm like you're a shitty ass staff nco why yes we're drone instructors but at the end of the day when me and you take this campaign cover off and a belt off you got to understand that i might be looking up to you as a mentor as a leader as a staff sergeant because i was a sergeant at that time mm -hmm. so i always tell the drone instructors remember yes you wear this campaign cover but when you take it off you're a marine what's your rank you're a staff sergeant you're a sergeant so lead as such show your experience it's, we get it, so caught up in the yeah. drone instructor mindset that we forget how to actually mentor them and guide them for a better future i feel you guys are giving the right answers and the reason why we picked you guys is because we know that you guys are top performing individuals and i know that there's a lot of people in right now that look up to you guys you know but i can already see because see uh, a senior drill instructors are still people at the end of the day they're yeah, still exactly. human beings at the end of the day and i can guarantee you that you guys are in the position that you guys are right now um, you guys have had your tr trials and tribulations, but I can already see a senior drill instructor that is having problems back home, that has financial issues. And then and it might not necessarily be because he is not trying to take care of his people or his recruits. It's because he got a lot of shit that's going on right now. So how, mm. can, a, how can me as a brand new drill instructor approach maybe that staff NCO that's not doing what you guys are doing because... That 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 senior drill. On top of all the other responsibilities that you guys have. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. It's rare for any drone instructor to speak up nowadays because they're just so afraid to not be liked or afraid to say anything. All they do is talk shit behind your back. Mm. Well, plus you know you're on a three four uh, drone instructor team. You don't want to let your team down. Yeah. As soon as I'm yeah. out of the fight, man, and I break it down to two hats. It's oh my slay. gosh! It, yeah. yeah, I've been you're I've slay. been in that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but to, to kind of what you were saying, cause I feel like maybe what you're driving toward, correct me if I'm wrong though, is like as a Marine, you should be able to talk to anybody anytime you want. Cause we're Marines. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think, I think a brings up a good point, right? There's a time and place. Yes. Well, there's a time and place. And I agree with that. I agree that there's a time and place, but sometimes me as a Marine man, like, and remember everyone's brains works differently. Like for me, I'm, I'm a rush type of guy. It's like, fuck, I need the answer. I need the answer right now. I can't wait. That, that's just me. Right. Sure. But like what I'm trying to get at is like, fuck man. 
It's been two yeah. days and we haven't had a meeting in two days because <laughs> this person has to go to medical. This person's like, this shit, I really need to get this shit off my chest because then now it builds up. And then what could have been a conversation, now it's like, hey, come here. Like, that you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. come well, here, dog. There's this, only. This, I already see this conversation. It's like, hey, let's take our campaign covers off. You're a staff sergeant. I'm a staff sergeant. And it's like, well, and, and then well, you well, here's senior, the you're like, man, fuck no. Hold on a second. On this podcast, there's just, if you've never been a drill instructor, there's really no way to properly articulate the right. culture and how things go. But what I, yeah. what I think is this. We're Marines. We do things to one extreme or the other, and it can turn into a slippery slope. And so that's where you get this segregated mentality that you speak to, you know, similar billet drill instructors. You you speak to with a, a very high level of respect to a senior drill instructor. If you're the J, even if you're a third hat, you're not even t going directly to the senior. You're okay. not. Yeah. You know, and and why do we do that? Because part one, we're Marines, and part two, it's a slippery slope. And before you know it, I'm going to the chief, I'm going to the first sergeant, I'm going to the sergeant major, and then it's like, okay, well, which one do we really want to have? Right. You know, and so it, again, part of it is it's it's hard to articulate, but it's like we're Marines, we do things to those extremes all the time. Now, um, changing uh, uh, changing gears uh, now, guys. So, high performing Marine, high performing Marine. What are your plans? Are you planning on staying in the Marine Corps after after um, the field, the drill instructor field? Are you planning on transitioning? What are you planning on doing? A lot of people are already uh, seeing it on my TikTok and whatnot, but I'm getting out. I have 12 months left, 12, 13 months left. What about you, Jasmine? Um, I actually got orders to first MLG. Oh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You going back to supply battalion? Nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so what has been some of the factors for you to decide to transition out of the military uh, my biggest goal was to become a my only goal in the marine corps was to become a drill instructor so i'm fulfilling that and then the reason you know i've, I've sacrificed it's gonna be nine years at the time i sacrificed family friends everything you know whatever i wanted to do to get to this point you know and to prepare myself to be here you know become a drill instructor do as many cycles as i can you know, maybe be the drill master, all this trash. You know, I, I worked my ass off for it and I sacrificed a lot for it. And me personally, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it 110%. Um, now my focus is shifting on to having a family, having kids, you know, all those things. Um, and I feel like I, well, I know I can't give my family 110%. It's 110%, then it's time for me to hang, hang up my uniform. Because I would hate to be the staff and CO that I hated once. Because n nothing wrong for them, you know, like they have their families and stuff. They want to focus on that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But I don't want to be like just the one guy that's showing up to, you know, get a paycheck. And then I'll just kind of give my Marines, like, oh, just make sure like they're good, you know, okay. that type of thing. And then I personally feel like I can do, well, I, I know that I can do way better for myself outside of the Marine Corps. Okay. Way better I, in what way? I love the Marine Corps, right? So way better as in like financial freedom, all those things. Can I do certain things? Like can I be a realtor while I'm in the Marine Corps? You know, but I still have to answer to somebody. I still have to mm. put a uniform on. There's still stuff that I have to abide by, you know, all those things. But you know, I want to reach that. I don't want to wait until I'm 39 to retire, you know, and do all those things. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I just like me personally, like in my heart, like I have this ambition, like I know I can get out. I can be making seven figures you know, a few years after I get out. Can I do that in the Marine Corps? Not really, you know, it's gonna cause a lot of stress on my family that I wanna mm -hmm. have. It's gonna cause a lot of stress on my job. I'm gonna be trying to do everything and I'm not putting, you know, 110% into everything. Everything's just getting half-assed or just getting done just to get it done enough. Okay. So me personally, that's why I wanna get out. Well, that's why I'm getting out because I can do more. You do know? you feel that the 36105s that you receive play a factor in it? Absolutely not. No? I didn't give two shits about the 61. My biggest concern was that I just didn't get held back from being a drone instructor. Okay. And thank God I didn't because it was my first enlistment, you know, and all that trash. But it has nothing to do with it. Okay. Is, is there anything that would keep you in? Is I, there, is I there any this question like four times already. Yeah. <laughs> no. There's and, no scenario. No, and, and, and it's not because... We're going to make you the commandant. <laughs> no. Commandant aid. <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> We're going to war. If, if the Marine Corps was like... If the Marine Corps was like... And there's nothing that the Marine Corps can do to me for me to stay in because the Marine Corps didn't do anything for me to get out. I'm not getting out like, oh, because fuck, there's bad leadership. There's good leadership. There's whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But the 
I'm not getting out because any of that. I'm getting out because I joined the Marine Corps because I had goals in the Marine Corps. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to sign a contract. I'm going to say the oath, you know, all the trash. I'm going to give you guys 110%. Yeah. But within that, I'm going to achieve what I want to achieve. And then I'm going to get out. So for the time that you have me, you have all of me do whatever. If someone's like, well, what if the Marine Corps is going to war? I was like, they had me for nine years. You could have done whatever the fuck you wanted to do with me for nine years. You could have mm -hmm. sent me to war, sent me to whatever you want. I was like, but once I get a DD-214 and I leave, hey, that's it. I mm. love the Marine Corps. I'm thankful for the Marine Corps. I think everyone should join the military for at least four years, mm -hmm. you know, because no matter how you look at it, it's going to benefit you so yes. much. Um, and that's it. I'm just going to... So, Jasmine, you own a business while you are in active duty. Can you talk to us a little bit more about what you do? Yes. So, I do body sculpting. Um, I started like a year and a half ago. Okay. I stopped once I came to the drill field just because of the okay. demanding hours, just because I would be in cycle. But I do um, own my body sculpting business, and I'm also coming up with my other business okay. um, that is going to be like proposed in the future, which I'm working on. And I tell my TikToks, my TikTok followers that um, to just stand by because it's like, Gonna be something big that they always ask for. So oh, I'm okay. sorry, I have a question. Yes. Body District sculpting? court request knowledge. What is body oh, sculpting? Body, <laughs> invasive body sculpting. Because I'm gonna get my body sculpted. No, invasive. <laughs> that's a that's What's a up? great that's a great question. Invasive body sculpting is like performing lipo without going under the knife or surgery. So uh -huh. technically, you could do it once every seven days, and it burns your fat cells away, and it, it lets you get a little bit more leaner. But you also have to have a good diet and exercise, so you could get a lot more definition on your body. Also butt lifting. You know how you don't have to actually go and get a butt lift. <laughs> There's cups that can actually butt lift your butt every seven days and it's like 30,000 squats in a matter of 30 are minutes. These, are these catfishes? <laughs> no, <Jazz. laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Abe was thinking it. Was like, Hold up, girl, that ain't your real bo booty over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's it's things that you know females would like to do just to you know build up their confidence or look better. Do women who are struggling to maintain Marine Corps height and weight standards come to you? Yes. Boom. They did. When I was at Camp Pendleton, actually, they did come to me. Um, and it was because, you know, uh, as fortunate as it sounds, they have to cut weight. Like right before I got to get in the sauna, I got to not eat. I got to do this. I got to do that. So instead of what they're doing, they're maintaining with the uh, invasive lipo because I also have a sauna bag that you get in there for an hour, 20 minutes and you just like hit it. An hour and twenty. It's cranked. Yes. <laughs> it's cranked. Ah, okay, so that's ah, So how do you how did you manage when you were in in as an active duty marine? How did you manage both both your professional military career and your professional uh, civilian business? So I worked my schedule with the civilian business. I was at a company garnishorn at that time, so I was very dedicated to the company ran MAI courses, started like 4.30 in the morning, didn't go to Lake Elsinore because that's where I live until like 1800 till the, you know, till the traffic dies down. Now some of the females actually were like, hey, I can't make it around this time because I also work. So I'm like, okay, the latest appointment I have is 8, 8.30 at night. They're like, okay, perfect. You know, or the weekends were booked. Saturdays, Sundays mm. were booked. I would probably get four, five every day and I'd be like, okay, that's good. That's good enough for me because you make you make money off of it okay mm -hmm. okay good yeah. now uh a obviously you're transitioning out in the marine corps like she's a little bit different because she obviously she's got orders so that it, that implies that she's staying in the marine corps yes. yeah. um you have 13 months left in the marine corps yes what are you planning on doing now that you transition because i know that you have a a, a clothing brand yes uh, can you talk to us a little bit more about that uh skinny kings um, it's not gonna be my main thing. Um, I started it as a joke because when I was a new drill instructor, I found this like bigger shirt in my car. I put it on. I was like, oh, it's good. Like, no one can see how skinny I am in the gym, you know? And I made a poll on Instagram. I was like, hey, I want to just start a brand for so all the skinny kings can just wear like big shirts in the gym. Okay. <laughs> and I had like a few hundred votes on it. And then literally within four days before cycle started, I just, I found the shirts, you know? I found, I would like, shit, I would, I would go, I would order the shirts online. It would come in. I would find a time. Like if the if the kids are in class or something, I would drive ten minutes away to like you know have someone print the shirts for me, and then I'll pick them up later some other day. And then after lights, you know after work for a watch at midnight, I would come here because literally five minutes away. I would come here and I'd be like packaging orders and like print shipping labels on them and stuff like that to get the brand out there. Yeah, that's and then crazy. 
uh, posters when I would try to do more. Um, obviously now as I'm transitioning out of the depot, I want to make it more like a bigger scale, you know, um, because I started obviously doing everything myself, like the printing, the labeling, all that stuff. I started just doing it myself mm -hmm. in house and I'll just make a bunch doing app posts and just have whatever. Um, so I do want to spend a lot more time on that. Um, I just started like the personal training thing. I put it on my TikTok, you know, so because I have a lot of guys like, hey, like how, you know, I want to get just a lot of people already know how to work out. They just need someone that's going to hold them accountable, give them like a yeah. different input. So the personal training, I am in the process of getting my real estate license. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And that's something that I really want to be invested in. So my goal is to have all that built up. That way, when I grab that DD214 and I walk off base, I'm like, I'm good. Like, you Got know. you. Okay. Okay. So um, you mentioned, you mentioned essentially three different businesses that you're yes. trying that you're trying to uh to do which one would you say it's like your baby right now the one that you're nourishing the most um my biggest focus right now is, gonna, is on the real estate stuff just gonna get my stuff. license because I'm, I'm gonna need time to like build that momentum you know i don't want to just like yeah. hey, yes i'm like okay well i just got my license now what do i do no like i okay, want to have cool. that as soon as i can build that momentum help as many because you know you got marines coming from all over the place to the depot you know we, yeah. we've talked about it before you know like guys don't know exactly what to do at all you know yeah so i'm trying to just like help as many people as i could while i'm in here you know build that relationship so i have the ball already rolling you know got you and and um i'm a real who's who's your uh, mentor whenever it comes to real estate um uh, who's, a one, uh, who's who's, who's our one, mentor who's wait one who's that one gunner sergeant Gunny Ramos. Gunny oh, Ramos. that's crazy. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. Okay, cool. Wow. No, no. <laughs> I love you how said, you hey, set that I up. said myself. <laughs> listen, you set yourself up with every question. I set myself up once for one question. <laughs> you made yourself you look, look at me, good. You, you look good. Wow, that's crazy. My question crazy. is, <laughs> if I get the butt lift. <laughs> Come to me. Because is yeah. that going to put me over the edge? <laughs> of just, you know, yeah. like, you'll be like, wow. Right? Maybe just a little. It works. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It works. And then they can call. What are they gonna call me? The Peach Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, okay. um, but any any closing remarks? You know, with with our followers, with with the people that follow the podcast, what would be your overall advice for somebody that is looking to go into the drill field? What would be your or drill field and is considering maybe like. You know, because there's a lot of entrepreneurs in, in, in the military. What would be your number one ones for that female that's looking at our podcast right now, is in the Marine Corps, in the military in general, thinking about doing a business and thinking about furthering their military career? Jasmine. Um, I would say female, even males, if you want to come to the drill field, have passion. Like, when you come here, be open to corrective criticism at all times. Know that everyone that started sucked everyone that started couldn't scream everyone that started did not know what they were getting into just hone it when you come here stop complaining stop bitching stop moaning stop complaining hone it you came here that's what you wanted to do and if you were hissed i'm sorry but plant you know you're planted there grow and maybe it could be like the best time of your life you just don't know will it suck yes will it be a time away from your family yes but at the end of the day you will grow and you're making a difference in the world in general because everyone joins from look we have egypt cairo you know who would who would have yeah. known you're making the next generation in the marine corps it's what you put into these kids what are they going to remember what are they going to do hey they and i tell my kids all the time you might be the next army major of the marine corps and i might be on i'm like holy crap you know mm -hmm. change what you came here to do you give them your all 110 percent. sometimes you're not going to have 110 percent, but just remember what you do it for and if you want to start your business you could have grew up poor but it's your fault if you die poor because at the end of the day you you are the owner of your destiny and what you want to become you're the only one stopping yourself you're the only one that doesn't believe in yourself believe in yourself nobody else will i promise you that and i learned that Nobody else will. Maybe my mom always believed in myself, but at the end of the day, when you're staring at yourself in the mirror, the only person you're staring at is you, and God will always be by your side, regardless. So never give up and follow your dreams, because you know some of us die with our dreams and we miss our opportunities. Do it, just do it. Hell yeah. Take the leap of faith and do it. You never know; you might become the biggest person out there, or yeah. you might fail. And if you fail, you can try again. That's how exactly. we learn. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a great piece of advice. Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest thing is just uh, never lose your purpose. You know, obviously, you know, I'm like, you are the backup, right? Stop relying on anyone else like you are the backup to yourself. Um, like you mm -hmm. said, it. you know, everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. You know, you have to be in love with the process. You know, if you watch a lion, Eric Thomas said it best. When you watch a lion, they're in love with the process of, you know, chasing the gazelle, hunting it down, like feasting on it. You have to be in love with the process. It's a part of it, you know, and then it's going to make you appreciate the prize so much more. Never lose sight of the goal and never forget who the fuck you are. Like, you know, if I tell you what's the slogan for McDonald's, like, I'm loving it. Nike, just do it, whatever it is. What's your slogan? You know, what slogan do you have for yourself? You know, and then how much are you willing to fight for that? So fight for it because no one else is going to fight for it um, on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So you have to give your best. You have to like, never lose sight of the goal. And, you know, put God in the center of it or whatever yes. you believe in. You know, I'm a firm believer yeah. that, like, you know, in, in my hardest times, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I was brought to my knees. You know, like I looked up, I was like, "Hey, God, like, what's next? You know, what do I need to do? Yep. You know, um, be a good disciple in order for you to be a good leader. You know, um, and just stick to it. Stick to to who you are, and just have passion." Hell yeah. Well, guys, we appreciate you watching. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and follow wherever it is that you're seeing this content in social media. Jasmine, where can people reach out to you? TikTok, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Jay's Fit, Jay's World, Instagram, Jay's World. Awesome, Abe. Mine is Instagram, Anguous A, or TikTok is going to be Egyptian. 103. <laughs> we, you, you guys saw what he did there. Barry, <laughs> where can people reach out to you at? Instagram at Bull5277, TikTok at Bull52772. Click the link in my bio, schedule the call. The call is free and the change will last you a lifetime. Hell yeah, guys. And you guys always know that you guys, I always tell you, click that like, share, yes. and follow button everywhere that you go, guys. We are bringing extreme value to your life. And the only thing that we're uh, that we're asking you is for you to share this content with somebody that you think will bring also extreme value into their lives. Thank you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of the A to B podcast.